Welcome to lecture number 21. This is topic 2.10, Black Pride, Identity, and the Question of Naming. The first and only learning objective says to explain how changing demographics and popular debates about African American identity influenced the terms they used to identify themselves in the 19th century and beyond. Let's start by talking about the demographics of African Americans in the 19th century. By 1808, the United States banned the international slave trade as had been promised under the Constitutional Compromise that forbade such a law for 20 years. Southern states that used chattel slavery actually imported more enslaved people directly to the United States in this 20-year period than in any other 20-year period of the Atlantic slave trade. After 1808, the percentage of African-born people in the African-American population declined. Most of the people who were African-American were born in the United States. The African-American population started to become a smaller percentage of the overall population because the rest of the population was doubling every 25 years, from 1750 to the Civil War. The African-American population was not growing at the same rate due to the majority of people being enslaved. After the banning of the international slave trade, there was some illegal importation of enslaved Africans, but it did not significantly increase the population of African-Americans in the country. By 1860, 488,000 black people had their freedom living in the United States. Almost half of them lived in cities. The free black population lived in cities at a higher incidence than the rest of the U.S. population. They were able to build stronger communities where they could form mutual aid societies, black churches, and social groups like the Freemasons and schools. One of the earliest black churches, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, was founded in 1816 by Richard Allen in Philadelphia. With the growth of the free black population, some white leaders and abolitionists formed the American Colonization Society to find a place in Africa to resettle free blacks. The people who supported this organization and the colonization movement as a whole were abolitionists who did not believe that slavery was morally right, but it also did not believe that blacks and whites could live amicably in the country. Their solution was to send black people back to Africa. They had plans to send them either to Sierra Leone, where the British had set up a free black colony, or eventually to the country of Liberia, where the American Colonization Society sent most people. Liberia declared its independence in 1847, becoming the first African republic to proclaim independence. Among the African-American population, there was divided support for an organization such as this one. Some believed they would never be treated equally in the United States, so their best option was to leave. Others, like David Walker, found it offensive that they would be shipped off to Africa after their work and labor had been taken from them to enrich the United States without anything in return. David Walker published an appeal to the colored citizens of the world in 1829, which argued against colonization and advocated for abolition. By this time, the free blacks that would be sent back would have been at least a second or third generation in the United States. They may not have had any specific knowledge about the lands in West Africa, their cultures, or the ways of living in Africa. More of them started to see themselves as more American, so to emphasize their American identity, they began to reject the term African and started using the term colored to self-describe or self-identify. We continue to see the use of the word colored to describe black people up until the early 20th century with the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, as a main example. This organization was created to advocate for the rights of black people and was founded in 1909. The Niagara Movement, which preceded the NAACP, was founded by W.E.B. Du Bois and others in 1905 to oppose racial segregation and disenfranchisement. At the end of the 19th century, new ethnonyms, or names for ethnic groups, racial groups, or nationalities, emerged for black people. As mentioned, they started using the term colored in the 19th century. In the early 20th century, there was a shift to using the word negro. This term started to be used by black organizations, artists, and intellectuals. The term Negro was popularized during the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s, a cultural movement that celebrated black identity and artistic expression. Carter G. Woodson, known as the father of Black History Month, wrote his book The Miseducation of the Negro. The New Negro Movement and Art Movement used this terminology as well, and it continued to be used throughout the Civil Rights Movement, which lasted into the mid-20th century. In the 1960s, the term black was adopted to combat negative connotations. Phrases like black is beautiful or black power emerged as examples of this new terminology. This term also encompassed the diversity of the diaspora because it referred to skin color and race and was not necessarily specific about where people came from, but it tied people together by their race. The black power movement was significantly influenced by leaders like Malcolm X and organizations like the Black Panther Party, founded in 1966. After the 1970s, the term African American started to be used as a way to incorporate African heritage and emphasize the American experience. 
People wanted to maintain both identities, and it became the most commonly used term. African American and Black are both acceptable ethnonyms to refer to someone who is Black today. Terms like colored and Negro stopped being used due to their association with periods of intense racial discrimination, such as the Jim Crow era, and their negative historical connotations. After the civil rights movement of the 1960s, there was a promotion for the use of the term black to signify pride and empowerment, rejecting older terms linked to oppression. The adoption of African American in the late 1980s, championed by leaders like Jesse Jackson, emphasized heritage and identity, while societal changes and increased awareness of respectful language further drove the shift away from these outdated terms. Institutions and media also gradually adopted the new terminology, reflecting evolving social norms. As mentioned, black is more universal because African American would not entirely or accurately describe someone who is black and lives in other parts of the Americas. All right, and finally, here's the recap. The banning of the international slave trade decreased the percentage of African-born people in the United States. The American Colonization Society was created to relocate free blacks in the U.S. to Africa, and African Americans adopted a range of ethnonyms through the 19th and 20th centuries. Thank you for watching. If you would like to watch the next lecture, click the thumbnail on the screen. And if you would like more resources to help you study, you can visit apushlights.com slash afam. I wish you the best of luck with your studies, and I hope to see you back on the next lecture.